All right, I'm back with another one. Season four, episode two of Westworld, titled Well Enough Alone. And I'm telling you, I'm liking this season. They setting up, man. I'm really liking it, man. There are just some key things that we're learning. And uh, I'm just loving every bit of it, man. I'm loving it, man. You know, Westworld, we try, like I said before, we try our best to keep up and try to figure out what's going on. But at the end of the day, even at the last episode of the season, you're going to learn and figure out a lot, but you're still not fully going to understand what's going on. And I mean, you could watch the seasons over season one all the way through over and over again. You're not going to figure it out, man. But we are learning some stuff, man. There are some things that we're learning, man. And one thing that we learned, as you can look at this picture here, they're um they're getting in the uh Mave and my guy here. What's my guy name, man? Let, let me pull it back up, man. What's my guy man my name my guy name? That uh What's my guy name? I know Aaron Paul. Caleb, that's right, Caleb. Yeah, my guy Maeve and Caleb, man, they get on, they go get dressed to go to the opera and they go to the opera house and this opera house takes them down into this secret patches way to get what they realize, what they later realize is a train. They're getting on a train and that train is taking us back to season one. When you take the trip to Westworld, well, this train is taking them back to the Westworld location and, you know. Once we get there, we see that they turned the Westworld location into a whole nother park. But on this train ride, they run us through everything that took place in season one on Westworld, where you you get dressed and uh, you can have a few drinks and you the robots uh, get your information, you know, get your basic information. And you kind of make your settings of how you want the world to be. And, you know, you get to pick out your clothing and all that. Notice at the end of that, when uh, uh, with Caleb and Maeve, they get to pick their hats. You get a black hat and a white hat, just like um, you get to choose, just like in the season one of Westworld. Notice that Caleb didn't, um, he didn't agree to take on the hat. Notice that. And the reason they didn't because they understand what's going on. They know you get them hats on. They're scanning your brain and getting your data. You know, notice they doing that. So, but remember, we learned the reason why in the presentation what the uh, robot version of William, the man in black, was saying when he was presenting the world at the end. Presenting this new 1920 Art Deco time. I t and on the side note, I would love to go to a 1920 Art Deco uh, time uh, town. I just like Art Deco style, man. I just like the suits and everything. And uh, then again, I don't know how realistic is this Art Deco uh, place is going to be because I don't know. I'm a black man going up in there. I don't know. They might uh, try to beat me and hang me or something. I don't know. It might it, it might be too realistic. I don't know. I got to see what the, the talk to the developers of this uh, 1920 land because I think Jim Crow was going on back in them days. So I, I don't know if I want to be at that West world facility <laughs> I don't know about that land I don't know about that uh, people but uh, I digress but the reason they created this world is because they had to create this world because remember when they had the massacre at Westworld and um, you know uh that, so Westworld was shut down, so they recreate this 1920 land. But the real reason they recreated because remember the the uh, Hell character, the woman, the um, the robot that was disguised as Hell, which I think it was Dolores disguised in the Hell bodies and Hell's body. Um, she left with the data. All the data that they had collected from the people in the park through those hats, 
And remember the data is at the, at the Hoover Dam and they can't access the data because it's encrypted. Remember? So they created the new park because now they got to recollect the data from the people again through them hats. They got to recollect the data. That's why they got this 1920 park in the first place. Okay. And we learn about the flies. We learn about what's going on with the flies. The reason you see the flies going on, remember that guy from the Department of Justice came through and he came through there and um Yeah, that guy in the Department of Justice, he came through there and uh to the headquarters at Delos and but he went to the parking garage and got in his car. Remember, the fly crawled in his eye. So what's happening? Now we understand in episode one of this season why the mafia boss, the crime lord boss, uh, not mafia, the cartel boss, whatever he was, why he saw all them flies in his house and stuff. Because and how he was a how his mind was because he was a human being. Now we know why his mind was be how his mind was able to be taken over and for him to kill those guys and they were they were able to take the dam because those flies. That's how they control humans. Those flies have like a virus in them or something and they crawl in your eyeball and they get in your brain and they, they're they used to manipulate your brain. So that's why the flies crawl into that Department of Justice guy's eyeball. So now we understand what's going on with the what, what's going on with all them flies and stuff. You know, we've been seeing we've been seeing those flies for a couple of seasons now. So now we're starting to understand uh a little bit of what's going on with them flies and all that kind of stuff. And one important thing that we learn is the man in black lives. William is alive. So what it looks like is hell. It looks like she's like, we see a scene where the man in black is, she's talking to the man in black and telling him his, um, telling him his, um, you know, her plan to take over the, to like con to start her home, her own race of robots and to control the uh, the human population. And notice she's replacing all the senators and all the important people like the vice president. She replaced him. She replacing all them with robots. And it's kind of make you think, man, hey, man, when they get this artificial intelligence and these robots going, man. There's some dangerous stuff. You not don't know who real, who fake, or uh, if your president is a real person or a robot or not. You know who knows? They might be already doing it now. Message, <laughs> but uh, she she's telling her plan to, to um to the man in black. And I think this happened like eight years prior, right after she had the man in black killed by his own robot at the end of season three. I think this was happening. She was talking to William. I, th I think she brought the real William back to life and she was telling him what she's planning on doing. And if you notice, she's a. Uh, She's keeping him alive. She brought him back to life. So, you know, William was playing around with the technology, you, you know, of uh, taking your human brain and putting it like into a robot and bringing you back to life. So it makes sense that the uh, robot, Hell, which is a robot, she would perfect it and get it to work properly. So it looks like she perfected that technology and she brought William back to life. Now, if you notice William's suit, when his arms are stretched out in that machine before she froze him, he's in some type of suit that got the wires going up into his body, it looks like. So he's connected in some type of way they got him connected to a computer or something and it look it reminds me of when we saw the lawyer the Loris at the end of season three she was connected to rehoboth was connected to her brain through them white wires so it so it looks like to me that might be why 
the William robot is able to tap into maybe the real life William's conscious consciousness and bring back those certain memories. Like when he was at the Grand Canyon and the robot talked about the last time I was here was when I was with a kid. And when he was talking to the vice president, he talked about his campaign and stuff he did previous years. Maybe some kind of way he's connected to the real William's brain and he's able to access the real William's memories or something like that. But uh, deep stuff. But to go toward that plan of how she replaced the uh, robots, I want to go back to that. How hell is replacing all the uh, elected officials with robots so that she can control the human race. Notice that um, when they went to that scene where they went to the senator's house and the senator and his wife were killed and replaced with those robots. Um, notice how the real the real wife of the senator right before she was stabbed in the back by her robot she said i have my she said i have i feel like i'm having a dream i think that was the fly that was already in the that was already in the the real life senator's wife's brain that fly was kicking in to manipulate her brain to probably kill her husband or something but they just went ahead and brought the robots in and killed and stabbed her in the back and notice how when caleb and Maeve they found uh well right here behind me caleb and Maeve how they went in this horse stable and they found the real life senator's wife in there like out of her mind cutting up the horses and stuff and all those flies were flying around yeah i think it's something deeper to that but we know that the flies were in were in her brain controlling her manipulating her brain got her going crazy those flies we see those flies we know that something's going on where they, they probably manipulating the humans but with that being said let's move on to predictions so uh first things first man I forgot to mention him. I think I don't think I mentioned this in my last review of episode one. Teddy is back. Teddy is back. Okay. And we got Teddy back. Now, why is Teddy? Now, what is Teddy going to roll? Is he going to play going forward? We're going to figure that out. What is going on with Teddy? I have a theory myself. I think how Teddy was able to come back and everything. So I'm going to just flat out say this. The Christina character, I think she's in a park. I think that she's in like a New York City style park. If you notice in episode one, when she was walking around, like walking around the city, there were people running around her talking about this is exciting and we're going to have fun. Those were like real people inside of what they probably call in future land or future world or New York based off of New York City. That's what I'm thinking that, that she's in. I think she, this woman, Christina, is inside a park herself. And we got to remember that Dolores, her brain was put inside Rehoboth, the, the, the machine that's running everything. So we have to wonder, is Dolores' brain, her consciousness inside the machine kind of manipulating different things that's happening? So that would make sense on how teddy was brought back because maybe that's dolores her brain inside of rehoboth bringing back teddy okay follow me now i'm telling you this is the, the this rabbit hole goes deep with westworld we can really go there with this thing man it's, it's really fun i really enjoy it but I tell you what, man, we're going to figure out what's coming up, coming up in the, we're going to see next week. We're going to get to see what's going, what, what what's going to go down in this 1920 Art Deco world and that, that was replaced by Sweetwater in Westworld. And key note, where they did the Sweetwater set for the show, they built that 1920 show in the same location where they did the, the Sweetwater set for the show. Just a side note. Uh, for the sh but anyway, 
We finna see, man. We finna see what's happening, man. What kind of trouble is Caleb and Maeve gonna get into? I tell you what, if you still here, you a real one. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Hit that share button. Hit that like button for me, okay? And keep watching. And then help me out with this, man. There's, there's so many rabbit holes and so much stuff. Go watch some of these videos on the breakdown of this show, man. There's so much stuff. I can't even watch all this stuff. It's too much to even digest. The rat People just throwing stuff. Because at the end of the day, people just throwing stuff up against the wall, man. Because they don't. They don't know, man. This writing is so complex and it's so far. The writers are so far ahead of us on this and this stuff is so deep. And um, we will see, man. Uh, oh, side note, I forgot I left out. When the Lord, the Christina character went and she found the Myers, the the insane asylum, the mental health asylum that was uh dedicated to named after the Myers guy that killed himself, the so-called guy that killed himself. That was interesting. And she looked up this Myers Institute. The guy had been dead for years, but the guy that committed suicide had the same name. See, and, um, the name of the Institute was like the hope medical center or something. Remember there was a hope church in spring water. In the, at the uh, at Westworld, there was a Hope Church, so that's even more reason that this probably is a is some type of park that Christina's in, probably called Future World or something like that. You know, Future World was a sequel to the original Westworld movie from back in the seventies. So it's probably with that Hope Medical Center that 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 place being named that, and then you got the Hope Church. That was in Westworld is probably just another fictional facility location inside this uh, future world park. We're going to find out, though. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. And until next time.